I'm Corey. I work at Play School PNI. I've been doing Node and JavaScript for some time, about five, six years now, I guess. Um, I mostly am interested in front end components, um, not specifically because they're front end, but mostly because I just find them to be more challenging. The fact that you have data that can mutate over time, it's not so much in and out, it's kind of like in, you know, mess with it over time and then some sort of output over time. So, yeah, that's my. Super quick introduction. Um, last time I talked about this sort of stuff, front end components. Um, I created this component about, I think it was about five minutes before I showed it. And the idea was kind of trying to get people to make really granular, really simple and uh, modifiable components and then building up applications from that. Um, when I was talking about that last, I had an idea for a way to make that a bit more tool like. Um, but I, it hadn't, I hadn't fully fleshed it out, and it wasn't up until about a month ago, maybe not even, um, that I had a, a requirement at work to make a, an interface that was like very data bound through multiple different sources of data. Um, so I thought, hey, I may as well just try and make this to uh, figure it out. So this is the old one. <coughs> it's a, an autocomplete or a prediction module. You can require it, make a new one, set its items, and set its value, and it will you know, try and autocomplete. The rest of it, I don't even have an example, but you can imagine what an autocomplete looks like. <clears throat> so the idea was though that you have, after you've created it, <clears throat> you get this object that you can, you know, have have a nice clean API over. Yeah. Standard, you get a set of style with like you can pass in a value to set it. You can, if you don't pass a value, you'll get it. Um, now this is cool, but it's really to, to integrate this in a bigger project, you're going to have to you know do a lot of manual binding to like events and person types into a text box, therefore set razor, I don't know, the values change, therefore set the value, which is kind of painful. So the next thing I looked at was this uh, module I wrote called Fasten. Um, as an example of how you'd use it, it's very simple. You can set it up, so you, what's that, Bigger, bigger five? Is that better? I, I can only see the top, like, top left corner of my screen because I've got a smaller res than this. So if I'm missing something down here, just yeah, let me know. Um, okay, so <clears throat> you can see, you can just require it and set it up with ways to render stuff, uh, which will come in handy in a second, where I, you, you see the API, when you use it, you call it with the type of component to make, and then children or settings or whatever. Now, whatever matches here in this list, it will render. If it can't find anything in that list that matches the first string, it will fall into this underscore generic component. Now the importance of having this object as a setup here, and this is something that people who are right into virtual DOM will find interesting, I guess, is that by default, Fastum doesn't know how to render anything or make anything other than it has an API of type, settings, children. That's it. Um, and the, the other thing it provides is uh, the ability to bind to data, which I'll get into later. But other than that, if you want to render any component, it has to be listed in this, uh, this like constructors component constructors list and they know okay based on the type okay make a thing and in this case the standard fast and generic component renders a, a DOM element which is probably what you're going to be using um, now we're going to try a thing which may not work because you know life coding and that I luckily installed this previously which is handy because otherwise it wouldn't work so I'm just going to do a quick, quick example of how easy it is to make stuff with Fasten. And then I'll, after I've made it, I find it easier once you've seen it, and I can explain like why it's cool like this, hopefully. So here I'm just saying, I'm probably gonna want to generically render stuff, and I'm just gonna use the standard one because DOM, I just wanna render web page type stuff. Do you always have to specify the generic? You have to. Um, we had default? a discussion, we had a discussion about this, and I explicitly decided to not have a default so that people know that they're doing that. Otherwise, you end up with very, uh, uh, what do you call it, like, um, it's like a word for it, but it's like, you're kind of coding off, oh, that's how I've done it before, therefore I'll do it this way. Whereas if you force the person to write the code and say, oh, I need to I need, need a generic component, and they go, okay, that's the component that I'm putting in there to be used. And if they forget it, it'll error and say, I don't know how to do anything. And then they go, oh, I wonder why that is. Oh, I didn't include the generic component. Um, I was thinking about making another module that basically wrapped all this up, but then I kind of think, I still like the idea of people having to actually type stuff to get it to work. But I'm really not a fan of convention over configuration for that reason. 
Um, so let's make a thing. Thing. Cool, really basic. Uh, the standard API on any fast component is you can attach it and you can render it. We don't need to attach anything so far, so thing dot render, and then we'll go this thing that you need to do every single time. It's a load, isn't it? So the other, the other convention for uh, the very few conventions that I have is that when you have rendered a thing, it will always have a, an element. That won't necessarily be a DOM node, it'll just be whatever it is that your generic component renders or your component renders, it, just, it could be any component. So let's see if this worked, I'll find out real soon. Oh, hello, it looks like it may have worked. So let me go over to my really awesome screen. So far it looks like this, let me refresh that. And there's my thing. That's really boring, obviously, because it doesn't do anything. But the point is, you can compose stuff together by, because everything after that is either settings. So, foo, bar, which I'll just save that. You can see now it has a foo bar that's just on the generic component, the standard HTML one or the DOM one. It'll add that as an attribute or a property depending on what it finds. So, like value, for example, in my text box it will set the text box as value, or like um, disabled, it'll set attribute because it doesn't have a disabled property. Um, and then after that, everything's a child. So if I do an image, right? So this is where we're gonna go, okay, we've got a thing, cool, but it's, it renders DOM, so probably make DOM nodes. Let's make that a div. We'll make an image with nothing in it, cool. So that's a child. So now we end up with a div, which has an image in it. Cool, pretty easy. Um, the next thing you'll probably try and do is go, all right, we'll just put some text in. And this is value. Get back to your point. And where's my text? What the hell, it made a text with what? That's really useless, right? So you go, hmm, I wonder why that is. And hopefully you read the documentation and go, oh, okay. It doesn't know how to render text because while you'd probably just make a text node in DOM, in if you're not running a DOM, you're running a virtual, you know, a virtual DOM or Canvas or whatever, there might be a different way to run a text. So we're just going to tell it how to do that. And then the default one is it renders a text node. So if we refresh that, hey, now we have a bar which has an image with nothing in it, obviously, and a text node. Now, already, you can, hopefully, you can see that it's pretty easy to build up structure with this. It's just, like I said, pull the thing, pull the settings, pull the children, and you end up with the structure. Now, obviously, if you're building UI, you probably want to be able to have data that you can do something with. So let's just say make a input. Uh, oops, come on. And what we'll do is we'll bind this value. So it has a value property. Let's uh, bind that to the thing. Now right now that won't do anything, it'll make the input, but it won't be, it'll be, it'll be bound, but nothing else is looking at it, so you, you know, what does that mean, basically? If I take the same binding and pass it as a child, uh, binding by default will become uh, text notes. Hey, look at that, I haven't bought Sublime. Surprise, surprise. Um, now, again, it won't actually update because I haven't told it. It's one directional, so I haven't told the input how to, you know, how to know when someone's typed something or whatever. Now, there's actually, you can either do, uh, like the Ben here, it's like on uh, key up sort of thing, but that's painful. So there's a little shortcut which is, um, on key up, I want to say grab from the element its value right, and set it into the value property. So this this input has a value property. So that's just a shorthand way of doing like an on key up set its value manually. Um, now hopefully, hey look at that, cool. So basically you have a binding, bind to thing, you have another binding, bind to thing, they're the same thing because they're the same string, therefore they're bound to the same data. Um, the other thing that you really would want to be doing if you're making a component or a UI is probably be able to bind to an actual data set. So you can uh, you can attach your component, your structure, to an object. Uh, let's say because I've used thing here, I can just go okay, thing stuff. I want to refresh. 
mesh stuff. Cool. So now they're actually looking at the same object. So whatever I put in there will be updated and um, if I looked at this over time, so if I took this object rather than throwing it in there directly, if I went window dot data equals that digger, and then I'm attached to window dot data. Let's have a look. Cool, totally works. It's thing stuff. Okay. <laughs> if I type into that and grab it again, you can see it's actually changed. And you can ignore this thing that Chrome is stupid enough to put in. There's this problem, I'm just going to go into this now and have a bit of a rant. Um, these are hidden properties, as you can tell by the fact that they're not like really dark. They're kind of like light coloured. This is what happens when you have a weak matte polyfill. Um, I actually don't need the weak matte polyfill in Chrome, but for some reason the polyfill decides it's going to use itself anyway. Which is annoying, but anyway, um, it, Chrome actually didn't use to list these. If you wanted to see these, you'd have to do like a like a manual dig into the properties and say, okay, where's the hidden property? But now it's thought it'd be super helpful and just spam objects with random shit. Um, so especially when you have big applications, um, and in fact, I'll maybe well just switch over to my example application now. It's not exactly a big application, but it's an application nonetheless. Um, so this is what I've been using, uh, just kind of my my testing grounds for. Um, that's not latest. Oh wait, no, it is. I just can't see it because my screen's too small. Um, this is like my testing ground for Fasten, and it's just like a really basic, you know, user list sort of thing. Type stuff and it filters it, or you can like click stuff and go, hey, it's a person. Delete people. You can, I can't do this because I can't see the button, but add people. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's not very, um, there you go, cool, pop down. <coughs> um, so this this kind of application is the sort of thing you can make with Fasten um, very easily just by having tiny little chunks of UI. Now the thing I was going to get into it was uh, me complaining about data. I didn't put it on Windows, so it's really it's alright. I can I can do some debugging. I'll just skim over this, what I just did there. But okay, so we have that same object, and hey, look, most of the data in there is shit I don't care about. That's really handy, Chrome, thanks. So yeah, you can see like the more stuff you bind to, it adds more weak maps and it just gets more annoying. But anyway, that's just an, off, that, that's an aside that doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I'll just have a quick little look at that code. So you can see, like that's not, that's a relatively trivial application, but you know, it's you've got a list of some users, now that renders in about that much time, so that was pretty quick. Um, it's actually, I believe, this is on my, my laptop's now four years old or so, let's do a profile. It took, the actual render step is the part that I care about, obviously. It took uh, some of that amount of time, I guess, hey, about a second, that's really slow actually. Should be faster than that, but either way, there's a hundred users there. They have every single piece of data in there is bound, so if you modify it anywhere, it'll modify live. Hundred users, even one second's not too bad, but usually it's a lot faster than that. Again, this computer's not overly fast. Now, okay, so the example app, and this is where I kind of get down to the uh, components thing, less the fasten thing. So let's have a look at the index file for that. It's pretty simple. That's it. Um, this is where you can really leverage like the required, like the node style of thinking with modules. Um, there's a header, there's a user list, there's stats, there's a fork banner. Like I mean, even the banner is, has to be a component, obviously. Uh, which you can't. That's the wrong one. But, you know, that little fork bean. Well, that was probably the best place to put it. So um, one really. Oh yeah, this is something you should get as well. Yeah, how handy is that? You can click your reply statement. And go to the file. So here's the uh, the header. It's a little bit more complicated because well, it has to be right. I'm saying make a header. That's class. Make an image. Make a h1. Um, here's where it gets a bit more complicated. I'm saying this is some text. Basically, it's just bound text. I'm binding to users, any user, and when the deleted property on that user changes. And I'm also requiring from somewhere else the search result binding. So. I don't need to know about the search in this file, it doesn't care, it just needs to know the results of the search. And when either of those change, rerun this function and return some kind of result, and that result will be displayed in the UI. 
So you can see that you know, you've got users total filter, if they're not deleted, return them and add it to this string. Now that string there is this one up here, user list example 100 users, um, which in this mode is basically impossible to see. Hey, there you go, 100 users. So if I start typing, saying 54, showing 4, etc. So that's that functionality there. Now the, the important part to note though, was that this file doesn't know how to search, doesn't know pretty much anything about it other than grab the result. And the actual search functionality is encapsulated in a completely different file. So over here, that's the search module. Um, this is a binding, so one of those things I made before. Bind to user search, which is uh, can be passed around and therefore other things can attach to that. So if you type into a text box that's bound to user search, it'll modify this binding and therefore update this search model because it's attached to the search model. Um, when it changes, do the search basically and put the result somewhere, in this case into uh, on this model, into result. And the result that I export is a binding to result, that way I can actually just pass around as an object, as data effectively and uh, use it wherever I want to use it. Following? Good? No? I don't know. So what I was, I was going to do, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time, because I kind of want to explain a lot of stuff. Uh, what I was going to do is get someone to say, tell me to make a thing, um, preferably something that they've had trouble with in Angular, not picking out any frameworks, um, or React, etc. And then see if I can make it easily with Python. So I don't know, like, has anyone had any like UI things that should have been easy from like a data bound perspective in any framework that they found hard in other frameworks? I mean, obviously, if you wanted to get this, this sort of stuff set up in Angular, you'd be like, okay, make directives, make tons of shit. It's just, it's just very, it really bogs you down. Like all the stuff you have to do to even get a button on the screen is just insane. Whereas here you've got like, you know, the entire application, that's, that's what we just made then. And I don't need any other dependencies other than Fasten. So any, anything, anyone? No, that's cool. <laughs> Nested list. Nested list. So a list with items, so users, for example, that have many things. Yeah, people and that's it, like that, children. Okay, so let's just set up the data then. <coughs> So like people, do you want? Do you mean like a um, a, gra tree. a graph structure? Yeah, yeah just a family tree. Well, that's just hard to set up as data though. That's not even. Not. Well, if you have like a, a, a mother or father, <laughs> you want you want to make some data? Okay. I'm gonna say is if if Bob has a, a child, this is gonna be an array. Yep. What if there's a mother? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Yeah, bam. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's, my complaint was more that the data's yeah, not gonna work. <laughs> um, yep, sure. So we have people, so there's people, children, Mary, children, etc. Um, so that shouldn't be too hard to do. So now the thing is, if you want like uh, absolute recursion, then you're going to want to have your list of children be a thing that you can reference in uh, many places. So, uh, children list equals function. So because you want to have more instances, you obviously want to make it a, uh, a way to create that, right? Create children list. Um, probably going to get past some kind of scope or whatever, but let's just not even worry about it. For now, a list, um, which by the way, how do you render a list? If you don't tell Fasten how to, you can't. So to get around that, there's another generic thing that you can grab, which is called list, which I supply because it's hard to write this sort of stuff on the fly if you need to. So the list component, cool. Now if I write list, it'll drop into that handler, which does stuff. So why are you using list instead of li? I mean, you can you use li. Or... Uh, well, ul probably actually. Yeah. Now it's a ul. Okay, but instead of this, right? Because it has to match one of the uh, components. So, like I said, if it doesn't know, if it's not explicitly the same key, it'll drop into the generic renderer. Yeah. So the this is not the DOM node, not the tag name. Yeah. It just happens to be in the case of things that don't touch 
list or text because the generic grabs and goes, ah, oh, I'll just automatically turn it into a topic. So you can override any container, which is going to be anything generic or anything that's a list, by just saying tag name is whatever you want. So that's, you can, yeah, you can do whatever you want there basically. Um, and again, that's completely based on this specific generic component. You yep. can make your own generic component that renders whatever you want and uh, yeah, go from there. Um, probably going to be children in scope here. So we're saying it's a, you know, it's a UL list basically, that's just items. Template is create children list. Cool, so we have a list that has a list that has a list, etc. So um, that's probably all I need to do, let's delete everything. Um, what's it looking at, children? Okay, so there's people. Let's make that children because, you know, everything else is called children, so. Otherwise, we're going to be causing some pain there. Attach to data, do the things, there's a template. Now, the child's pretty boring since it doesn't actually have any name or whatever. So let's go. Well, you would do thing.attach window.data.people, right? Yep, that's the. Uh, you you don't want to do the could children. do that, yes, yes, that's true. Um, so, name. So we'll do the person's name and then we'll render out their children. Um, yeah, that should be good. Now the one thing to point out here though is because lists, you want to have context of both the key and the item. You don't want just the uh, just the item because sometimes you need to know that you're the fifth one. So when a child gets past its chunk of data, basically, it doesn't get it gets past in an object that has data. Uh, sorry, um, item which is the data and key which is the key, which is really. Yeah, obvious. But um, so in here, I want to go. Uh, because of that, I'm actually going to make this a bit more complicated than it would have been. So model model is what gets passed out of children, and it has like a dot item. So I'll go return itself and attach that to the model uh, dot item. Actually, that's a uh, you know what I'll do. Not that. So that's basically saying whatever scope you're in, just be in that instead. So if it, instead of being the model, which is going to be the scope of key and item, it's now going to be just go down a layer into item sort of thing. Cool. That probably, uh, oh, holy shit. I don't think this will work. <laughs> it totally works, there you go. Um, so that's a recursive list. Name Bob, name, this one didn't have a name. I'm guessing that's somewhere up here. I didn't give someone a name or a child doesn't have a name or something. I don't know. They're basically, the root doesn't have a name. The root doesn't have a name. It totally does now, yay. Cool. So yeah, like that's the sort of thing that in other frameworks, especially recursive stuff, can be really unwieldy and really difficult. Um, and that's it in, 11 lines of code. Uh, it's not overly, I mean, it, it can definitely be broken out, and that's generally what I would do is I'd make it a lot less just clump of data. And in fact, that's what I was trying to show you with the uh, this example of like little bits of stuff, like you have a search bar rather than just like a header with everything in it, you know, um, search bar. But you know, you can kind of see where you can build up these little tiny bits, this little tiny thing of you have an element, some properties, and children. And from that, that basically describes any application and um, because you can attach the data at any point you can attach data from different sources so say you're down here and you want to attach to like a, a top level thing you can just go uh, say you've got name as that and then you've got like um, thing and then some data for each child you want to render something but it's not in its in the child's data it's in somewhere else I can find to like foo then explicitly attached to um, like data, for example. Now, if I put foo into here, so name is that foo bar. Oops, wrong one. Did I do it? Thing, yeah, thing, thing, thing. Cool. So you can from there you can see that even though these are recursively nested and they get the data of the scope that they've been passed each time, 
if you explicitly attach to a chunk of data, it still works. Like you can just tell any part of the UI at all to be like, look at this data. And that data there doesn't have to be anything special. It's just an object. It's not, it's not an observable. It's not some kind of crazy modeling thing. It's just some data. And at any point, that can be actually, say that we want it to be more complicated for some reason and you wanted to make that a, uh, an input just to prove that it's actually bound. So bind your value to that and on the uh, value, value, and that's an object. Ah, oh, because I attached, that's stupid. Do button dot binding. Sorry, did that wrong. Okay, bar. Now if I got this, they're all looking at the same object, they're all looking at the same data. It's instance based, so because this data, this object here is the same instance, they're all looking at the same thing, they're all looking at the same key on that, they all update because they all get bound to the same thing. Um, I'm gonna go back to kind of thing that I completely skipped over that I wanted to go over, um, which is like not specific to this, but it's like a general feeling for what I see, how I see UI is being created. Um, people like to use frameworks a lot, Angular, React, whatever's coming up next. Um, from my perspective, I see frameworks to be like this, yeah, when you think about a framework from a like a manufacturing perspective, no one goes and buys the framework of a house because otherwise everyone's house is going to look exactly the same. You, know, you don't really want that. You, you, you kind of want the way, like, you just kind of don't want this same thing that every single other person has because usually it's one thing. It doesn't either it doesn't fit your mold because it's like not enough or it's too much or it's whatever. Then a lot of people kind of like to go down that no tools, just straight work with the DOM. I'm like, hey, that's great, you'll end up with a mud hut because you have got you don't have any tools, you can just go with you know your bare materials, you just slap them shit together and eventually you get a man to do it. Um, and I'm just gonna be stupid here and say, yeah, if you use kind of hybrid, you can make a mansion, yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's sort of true, right? Because if I can give you another last example, which was, um, this is something that I probably shouldn't show you, but whatevs. I don't know if on YouTube, I'm it's okay. Um, this is something I'm doing for work. So this is just some, a management console. It's like, think of like AWS, I guess, but very, very early days. This is the thing I had to make, um, I was asked to make, and um, therefore I made Fasten for this. Now the interesting point here that this kind of all comes together with is everything you see on the screen here, like this menu and the data and this, this chunk of UI here, I don't know about that. The server tells me what it is. The server tells me that there's a system called Tenant. It has these menu items. When you click them, go to this page. Okay, cool. I go to that page and it goes, well, I don't know what to do. And, and so the server goes, okay, these are the, the widgets to display. It's a, it's a, a list of items. Um, for each item, display this chunk of UI. Uh, and I don't mean like HTML, that's just data. Like it's just a, a JSON object that gets sent. And from that, I have to render each component, which is actually quite similar to the, uh, the recursive list that you were talking about. Um, and I can't see that plus. That becomes super tricky when you get stuff like this, which is this screen has data to tell it how to render in, in terms of like what components there are, and that's bound. So if I go modify that data and say one of those is no longer a string, it's actually a, an array, then I'll get a drop down instead of a, um, so that's like that's your array style. This is your uh, type number. If I change it from type number to type string, that'll change from an input type number to an input type string, because it's all data, data driven. But the other point is if you type stuff, that's got to go somewhere, it's got to go into a model all these pieces of data. And because you can just arbitrarily attach to shit, you can have like one piece, one part of your code, you know, iterating through the, the definition for the structure of, this, of the page. But also through throughout that, you can say, but when you type into a text box, attach to this form model, which is like a nice flat structure. So this could be like a recursive structure of, you know, fields within forms, within fields within forms. But the end result is just like, you know, first name, you know, what I'm, amount, etc. And I think that's the, the part that I'm finding most fun to work with, with this sort of stuff, is that it's just really extremely composable. Um, you, can, you can just break stuff out into a function, just say, yeah, just make me some UI later and I'll, and I'll deal with that whenever I get given it. Uh, another point is that, that kind of, wow, that's really zoomed in. Uh, another point for that, that, that shows you that is when I put, press the little plus here, this component 
is its own little chunk of Fasten app that doesn't really know about the parent one at all. It just it just chucks its element in the DOM. So here, the new user dialog is just a div. If I delete it, it doesn't care. I can just make another look. That is its own, like, I don't know what you call it, app, I guess other people would call that. It doesn't need to know about the parent because it's just looking at the same objects. It doesn't care that there's a fast app around it. It could be an Angular app, it could be a, a React app or whatever. It's, you can just make a chunk of UI and just it does its thing and it'll tell you about when the data changes, if you want to know about that or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, we use this at work uh, where we had an app wrote in Gaffer, which is a thing I wrote a while back and I'm kind of getting sick of it now. And it's getting a bit slow. Um, and we had a screen that had like multiple tabs. Um, I think it's like six tabs across and there's like 50 fields down so that's obviously quite a lot of stuff to render and in Gaffer it took 22 seconds to render which was probably not acceptable for users um, and we replaced that with we just kind of said okay let's do this screen and then I don't care just do it in Fasten and it took it now takes about uh, 200 milliseconds to render which is obviously significantly faster and the two frameworks are not done they don't know how to communicate in, in any other way than some data change and some data change, and they work perfectly together. And um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm getting to. Where's my little ad user? It's a new user, there it is. Okay, so this is what I was saying with this file. You can see it's just a function that takes some data and it makes another little fast map, renders it, or attaches to the object, some arbitrary object, which is like default data for that for a user renders it and just appends it to the body. So it doesn't know about the, the parent application, but you can still, you know, do what you need to do. And it will still communicate insofar as passing data around. So I don't know, I, this is something I've really had fun working with, and I don't know if I'm getting across if it's cool or not. People yeah. think it's cool, yeah? yeah I don't know. Cool. But I, I kind of get a bit lost in my own head with this. Um, but yeah, if I would really, really like people to screw around with it. Um, I personally think it's production ready, which is a big call. Um, we already use it in production at work in two different projects and it's going great. It's really fast, it's really light. So this source for this, this is unminified. It may be gzipped, I don't really know how GitHub does this thing. Oh, let's see images. This is 220k, I'm guessing that's not gzipped, uh, not minified with comments and uh, just the full source and that's everything that's the whole application if you look at like the, the HTML for this application which would have been there it it's just nothing that's it so you, you can when this gets used it's minified it goes down to like like I don't know 30 40 kilobytes sort of thing so it's it's tiny and obviously because it's small and it's very has a small service area to its API it's also fast awesome, obviously um, yeah so any questions Yes? So given that you've got this idea of generic components that's like on the yep. could you render to non-digital UI You can render to anything you'd like, so as long like as you can make it. Like a Johnny 5 servo object. What's that? Like a Johnny 5 servo motor. Or that sounds really hard, but yeah, if you, if you know how to do that, then great. Basically all it does is it gives you a, an object that has properties, and what, what you do with them is entirely up to you. Um, for me, I'm spending most of my time writing Web applications, and therefore my components render. Dot. Um, you, could, you could render to like the web audio. Interface. You could render absolutely. You could render to anything you want. Um, I, we'll see if this works. Uh, it probably won't actually work, but um, one thing I did just for fun, just to see what would happen. This was so stupid, but it kind of worked. <laughs> um, so because Fastm just renders text nodes, this one time I wrote a, a style tag. I'm vegan. Sorry. I, I can see it. What are you, what's your problem? Um, so I wrote a style tag with a selector and a color that was bound, and it, you now have dynamic style sheets because it just renders text into a style tag. So now you have this style sheet that is completely dynamic. And I don't mean like compiled dynamic, I mean like you have a text box and you type red and it becomes red, or green and it becomes green, and your whole UI will just change based on the CSS that you type. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So the point is, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care what you're rendering. Um, well, I hope. Uh, I may have made some mistakes every now and again and just kind of like assumed I'm in Widowland, but I hope I haven't and I really like, it would be actually really cool if you could make something that, that
that rent to so a different unit they've this? got. This one I have. Okay. It's quite fun. Um, I run another one that actually piles just a, a, C, like a, a CSS file and automatically put in bindings for every single um, value, including every single word. So that was pretty slow. Uh, how do you actually update the, the style, right? Because it's not a text node it that, that cover is pointing to. Uh, yeah, that's, that actually renders as a text node. So I'll show you that here. So all these are text nodes. So if I like look at name or whatever, you can see name is its own text node. Bob is its own text node. Yeah, I just thought in this style it would all be like one text. Yeah, no, you can actually just put text nodes in styles and it doesn't care. So the way it actually that does is it, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just dump whatever you want in a style tag, including text yeah. nodes, and it basically just does an inner text on it, and yeah. then that's your style. So you yeah. can put anything in there. It's surprising the browser doesn't like cache that because it's like this isn't yeah. a usual use case. No, it's right? pretty, it's so pretty it's nuts. like you would think that they would just was, cache yeah. it at the beginning and then be done with it. There was one cool thing I saw someone do. Um, uh, See if this works. This one's pretty nuts. So because it is just DOM, and because of the way it, 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 uh, it repasses that, let's see if there's a link to it. View demo. Okay, so this here is the actual style tag, but it's been turned into content editable and made visible by the uh, the style. So this that I'm typing into literally is a style tag. Could you like expect element on that? Yes. Not very interesting, but that is it. That's a style tag. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I, I can go uh, board uh, because it, it can't parse this. It goes, oh, it's not right. Therefore, I won't do anything. Did I spell that right? Uh, that should be fine. It's on the body. Yeah. It's not working. Trust me, it totally works. <laughs> oh, there you go, That's, that works. Um, you reckon, what do you want to do? I'm pretty sure that doesn't matter, but okay. You're going to have to change the Oh, like that, yeah. <laughs> change the body to yeah. style. What's that? Like the selector, yeah. Yeah, style. that's, um, yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, no, no. <laughs> 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 what do you want to do? What would you like me to do? Just, Just tell me what to type and type it. Change body to H1. Is there a H1 in there? Yes, there is. It's just, I think it's super cool. Like, it's just. Yeah. I, must have, I seriously must have screwed something up there. Did I spell order? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, bang important. Yeah, yeah, bang important. <laughs> 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 I think it might be something to do with like, line spacing or I don't know. Whatever it is, but ah, uh, oh, you're pushing enter and putting p tag in there. What divs? Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Go away, div. Uh, I've screwed everything up now. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. But <coughs> well, it totally works. But um, yeah, no, I think that's really cool. You can just like modify this random style sheet tag like on the fly and it updates on the fly. I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, I don't think that was ever intentional, but I mean, the effect is pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So, any other questions or? Where do you get your images from? Which one? The random people. Is that like a placeholder service? Or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's in the README. Um, I just went to hundred people and just took photos and. This is my <laughs> quite a trend. Uh, <laughs> random user dot me. Oh, yeah, you, the maximum you can create is hundred, so I created hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, what else? Um, components themselves, the generic and the text components. Can you show us a sample of yep. what that actually looks like? Yep. <coughs> Look, the generic component itself has too much stuff in it. I would like to refactor it out. Um, and especially with the font, this big is going to look terrible. Uh, just give it a second. Let's get to the bottom. All my files start at the bottom. So on render, make an element, which is just... Uh, okay, so this is the problem. because it. The generic actually under the colors will create a container component, which again, it doesn't, Fasten doesn't know how to do parents and containers and nesting. You have to tell it how to do that. And in this, there's a container component which says, okay, they're children in the, in the node list. So that just says get the element that that rendered. Uh, 
add an automatic handler for anything that has an on in the uh, in the key. Just assume that's probably an event. Uh, add anything if in the actual like dot on events. If there's anything that matches uh, an event name, also add that as a handler. So that's what the generic does. Um, uh, add auto handler. I mean, that's kind of just add an event list of things. Same thing for add uh, their handler. Create properties. So iterate through all the properties that are passed and create our property. Now, prop this where it gets a bit messy, but so when you're rendering server side, then don't care about these events at all. Well, right? so you would have a if you want to render server side, component. yeah, you'd have like a server side generic component, yep. and it could uh, do whatever you want. I mean, generally, you'd probably just want to cats and stream. Yeah, you could potentially do that. Yeah, um, although if I were to do it myself, I'd probably use something like um, yeah, JS DOM or one of those. It's just a lot easier to work with. So you can actually render these as if it was DOM. Um, when you think about it, DOM already is a virtual DOM. It's a document object model of your document. So I think that's really weird when people have like virtual rendering to a virtual layer, to a layer. Like it seems really verbose to me. But um, yeah, so things like JS DOM, it's really cool. You can make a DOM and just go to a string and then it gives you the entire structure. Um, it's really handy. But yeah, like say, one thing I was thinking about was, uh, say you want to render ASCII art, your generic component probably isn't going to render DOM nodes. That render probably to some kind of ASCII layer. I'm sure there's an NPM ASCII thing out there, which I'm not going to be looking for. But yeah, that's the sort of thing you'd, you'd, you'd override all this stuff to do whatever your, you want your generic components to do. Now you don't actually have to have a generic component fallback. If you want to make components and your whatever type you pass as the first parameter matches everything in there, that's fine. You'll never hit the generic component. It's just there for ease of use for things like DOM where you have all these different tag names. You don't want to go define like a thousand tag names yet. Anything else? That's it. Cool. Please use it. Send me pull requests. I will probably fix things. Cool.